You wouldn't download more RAM, would you? Well, in this case, you just might for your Steam Deck. Plus, I went hands-on with the beta LAN transfer feature. What did I think? And Valve just added media playback to the beta channel, but it's not quite done yet. All this and more today. That's right, it's Steam Deck news time. At one point or another, we've probably all had the occasional weird download free RAM scam floating around. You know the one. It promises free performance upgrades with a sketchy download. Well, when it comes to the Steam Deck, Cryo Utilities is an easy to install performance boost that you may not be able to live without anymore. Developed by YouTuber Cryobyte33, the original tool was made to tweak the Steam Deck's swappiness, how often the deck writes data to RAM versus the swap on the SSD, and also enables trim mode. These changes are able to help extend the life of the Steam Deck's SSD and smooth out frame rates in some cases, as this reduces how much data is being written back and forth between the RAM and the SSD. In a recent update, Cryobyte33 not only overhauled Cryo Utilities, rewriting it in Go and adding a graphical interface, but also added new tools to tune the memory parameters and better manage game data. A full list of additions are listed on his GitHub page, but there's a few interesting ones that I'm going to touch on. He's added buttons to set to recommended and revert to stock settings. He's added toggles for huge page uh, defragmentation and management. He's moved shader cache and compat data to the same location the game is installed in and you can delete shader cache and compact data for whatever games you select. Plus, it comes with a full CLI mode. And just a quick glance at the Steam Deck subreddit shows that the community members are quite pleased with Cryobyte's work here. Glowing reviews and posts saying that Valve needs to just hire this guy already. Despite only having created a YouTube channel five months ago, Cryobyte33 has amassed 21,000 subscribers. Not only because of the tools that he's built, but also his analytical performance optimization guides as well. Now, Cryo Utilities is not a magic bullet, and it won't make games like Returnal run at 60 frames per second, but smoothing out frame rate goes a long way to making a game feel more playable. Now, I highly recommend watching his tutorials to get started. If you like the work he's doing, you could also donate to his Patreon page. So what do you think? Have you tried Cryo Utilities yet? Leave me a comment and let me know. I would love to hear from you. Next up, I've heard a lot of people in the comments talking about how complicated it is managing mods on the Steam Deck. And while I can't say that it is as straightforward as it is on Windows, it is equally as achievable. That's why I had Jackson put together a pretty thorough guide to installing and using a mod manager on Steam Deck. Now this one particular article is written for Skyrim, but since it's using Vortex, you can get it up and running with a variety of titles following the same guide. Check it out with the link in the description or on screen. If you have a Steam Deck, you've probably noticed small incremental game updates that happen quite frequently, especially when compared to Windows. But why does this happen? Well, when a game goes to render a shader for the first time on your PC, which is po a post-processing effect basically, it needs to actually compile that shader for your graphics card. But this takes time, especially for complex shaders. And while the game waits for the shader to compile, it can't do anything else. So it results in inconsistent frame rates and incredibly poor performance. To mitigate this, Valve compiles the shaders and caches them on their servers. This is a time consuming process for them and it's a constant work in progress. But as they roll out these incremental shader cache updates, players download them to their machines and with them, it brings improvements to game performance. However, since 2021, many players have complained about having to download the entire shader cache for a game or games every single day. This can be in the hundreds of megabytes and sometimes much, much larger. And as you can guess, this is bad for everybody involved. Gamers, because they have to wait for the downloads to complete and it could consume limited bandwidth. And Steam, because when you download gigabytes of data at a time, it costs them money. Well, Valve's Pierre-Louis Griffet signaled that there might be an end in sight for this issue. He said, quote, Shader cache downloads are designed to be incremental. Reports here indicate a daily download of the full shader cache file size, which is inconsistent with expectations. A small download and full disk write is expected instead. After looking at the logs shared on this issue and in another, we've investigated and found a server-side problem with the system that keeps track of the ordering of shaders in those updates. We've just rolled out an initial fix and we'll continue to monitor the situation. If the issue persists, please comment on this report and attach your shader log as indicated above. Hopefully this means that this issue is completely solved. But what do you think? Have you ever had to download an entire game's shader cache multiple times? Is it fixed now for you? Leave me a comment and let me know. Before we continue, I gotta ask though, why haven't you liked that smash button? 
If you do, you'll be well on your way to seeing more content just like this. You can also subscribe if that's more your speed. I want to say thank you to Webfreak and the 74 other people who make what I do here possible. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to do this, so thanks. So on Friday, Valve released a beta Steam Deck client update that had a hotly anticipated new feature, LAN game transfers. I tested it out over the weekend and released a video about it on YouTube, as well as a companion article on my website, ViewSync. While the web version was seen by the usual audience, the video wasn't for some reason. So I wanted to talk about my experience with LAN game transfers here briefly. Essentially, I think that this is going to be a useful feature for folks who already have a large PC game collection. They already have most of their games installed on their PC, and then they buy a Steam Deck, or if you frequently attend LAN parties. But if you don't belong to that subset of a subset, then I think you might be a little disappointed with their implementation. For my full thoughts on this, you can watch the video here. Now, speaking of beta updates, a new one hit on Wednesday. And this one was interesting because there was a new, never before seen and incomplete feature added to the Steam Deck client that was not listed in the change log. Now, if you look at what the change log actually said, Valve mentions fixes for quotes in path names, updates to the quick access menu, improved UI responsiveness, and a few other things, but nowhere does it mention this new feature. A new section in your library, soundtracks. Now, this is really interesting because this is a brand new UI that we haven't seen before, and it's obviously incomplete. See, the UI shows you all of the video game soundtracks that you own as part of your Steam library. And the album art is arranged here in the same grid as video game key art, leaving this awkward vertical spacing between the square album covers. But that's not all. Clicking on the cover art takes you to a bespoke interface for the album in question. On this screen, you see a striking layout that feels right at home on the deck. You have the album name at the top with the composer or the artist underneath. The number of tracks and the length of the whole compilation, plus the game it's from. The cover art sits neatly on the left atop buttons to download, which actually becomes the play album button once it's been downloaded, as well as a visit the store page and support button. And on the right is a clean looking track listing. But there's an issue here. When you try to play the album or any of the tracks, you end up with an error that says music playback unsupported on Steam Deck. Interestingly, if you're running the desktop Steam client in beta mode and you launch big picture, you can actually play songs from the same interface, but it'll launch the desktop client's music player. Now, I think this is an oversight on the part of Valve, forgetting to hide this in development feature before pushing the latest beta client. I'm 100% of this UI edition though. I think that it's great and I can't wait for playback support to be added to the Steam Deck. However, I do need to ask, does this section really belong in the library? I mean, yeah, these are things that you own and that are part of your Steam library, but shouldn't this be in the mostly unused media tab? I mean, frankly, I think that it would be nice to have the media tab do more than just manage screenshots. I'd love to see this section mature into something to rival Cody, where the media you own in your Steam library can live. And down the road, it would be nice to have the ability to play and manage your own collection of media and streaming services as well. I'd love to see a Jellyfin interface in the media tab. And I know Emily would love to have Spotify natively accessible in the Steam UI. So will you be making use of the soundtrack section when it actually starts working on the Steam Deck? Leave me a comment and let me know. I want to give a special shout out to my friends over on Patreon and my YouTube members who make what I do here possible. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to do this, so thank you. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you want to help support the show, you can use the links below to become a YouTube member or a patron. It's all greatly appreciated. That's going to do it for now though. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day and I'll see you guys in the next one.